we are asked to evaluate the double integral over the region D where the integrand function f of x comma y is y divided by the quantity one plus x and the region D is defined here where x is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to two and y is greater than or equal to negative x and less than or equal to the square root of x. If we graph this region on the xy coordinate plane, it gives us this region here. Now looking at the double integral, notice how we have dx dy on the end, which means we are supposed to integrate with respect to x first and then y. But if we keep the order of integration as it's given, notice how the region is bounded on the left by the square root function and linear function, which will make it much more difficult. And therefore, we will change the order of integration in order to evaluate the double integral. The given double integral is equal to the double integral over the region D of f of x comma y. And then if we change the order of integration, we have dy dx. Looking back at the region D, notice how the region is bounded below by just the line and above by just the square root function. And therefore, this order of integration will be easier. And now let's set up the double integral. f of x comma y is y divided by the quantity one plus x, and we have dy dx. And now let's determine the limits of integration, first with respect to y. Remember, we need to determine the limits of integration for y in terms of x. So going back to the region D, the region is bounded below by y equals negative x, which means negative x is the lower limit of integration. The region is bounded above by y equals the square root of x, which means the square root of x is the upper limit of integration. And now we need to determine the limits of integration for x. Notice along the x-axis, we integrate from zero to two. And now we begin integrating. We first integrate with respect to y, treating x as a constant. The antiderivative of y with respect to y is going to be y squared divided by two, and therefore this is equal to the integral from zero to two of, again, the antiderivative is going to be y squared divided by two with x plus one still in the denominator, which gives us y squared divided by the quantity two times the quantity one plus x. The limits of integration are from negative x to the square root of x. And now we need to find big F of the square root of x minus big F of negative x. We begin by substituting the square root of x for y, which gives us the square of the square root of x divided by two times the quantity one plus x, and then minus big F of negative x is the square of negative x divided by two times the quantity one plus x. Notice how we do have a common denominator. This is equal to the integral from zero to two. The square of the square root of x gives us x, and the square of negative x is x squared, and therefore the difference is the quantity x minus x squared divided by two times the quantity one plus x. We still have differential x. Let's factor out the two from the denominator, which is equivalent to factoring out one half. This is equal to one half times integral from zero to two of the quantity x minus x squared divided by the quantity one plus x differential x. Let's continue on the next slide. To integrate with respect to x, we could factor out the x from the numerator and then perform u substitution, but notice how the degree of the numerator is two, the degree of the denominator is one. Whenever the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator, we can perform long division to help us integrate. So let's perform long division. When we do this though, let's write the terms of the numerator in descending order. Let's write the dividend as negative x squared plus x. Divided by, let's write one plus x as x plus one. Now we begin by determining what times x gives us negative x squared, which is negative x. Now I multiply negative x by the divisor. Negative x times x is negative x squared. Negative x times one is negative x or minus x. And now we subtract. Instead of subtracting though, we will add the opposite. So we change the sign, change the sign, and change the sign. 
this sum is 0, x plus x is 2x. Next, we determine what times x is equal to 2x, which is 2. The next term in the quotient is positive 2 or plus 2. Multiply by the divisor, x times 2 is 2x. 2 times 1 is 2. And now we subtract by adding the opposite. So change the sign, change the sign, and change the sign. This sum is 0. Here we just have negative 2, which is a remainder. And therefore we can write the quotient as negative x plus 2 minus 2 over the divisor of x plus 1, which means this integral is equal to 1 half times integral from 0 to 2 of negative x plus 2 minus 2 divided by the quantity x plus 1. And now we integrate with respect to x. The antiderivative of negative x with respect to x is negative x squared divided by 2 plus the antiderivative of 2 with respect to x is 2x minus this last antiderivative, remember, the integral of 1 over u differential u is equal to natural log absolute value of u plus c, and therefore the antiderivative of 2 divided by the quantity x plus 1 with respect to x is 2 times natural log absolute value of x plus 1. And now we need to find big F of 2 minus big F of 0. We begin by substituting 2 for x, which gives us the opposite of positive 2 squared divided by 2 plus 2 times 2 minus 2 natural log absolute value of 2 plus 1. So there's big F of 2 minus, now we substitute 0 for x, which gives us the opposite of 0 squared divided by 2 plus 2 times 0 minus 2 times natural log absolute value of 0 plus 1. Looking at the terms here, this is 0, this is 0, and natural log 1 is also 0. Simplifying, we have 1 half times the quantity. The opposite of 2 squared divided by 2 is negative 2, and this is plus 4, and here we have minus 2 natural log of 3. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2, giving us 1 half times the quantity 2 minus 2 natural log 3. Distributing 1 half gives us the exact value of 1 minus natural log 3. Well, if we want our decimal approximation, this is approximately negative 0 0.0986. I hope you found this helpful.